Hi, everybody. This is Tracia Bolin with Worthy. And today we are very excited to have Simo Muhammad with us today. And uh, he is he is just, um, he is from, actually, I'm going to let him tell you where he's from. Yes, sure. he has He has been, he's been a new to the United States um, since the last four years. And uh, welcome, Simo. And I'm so glad to have you on Worthy today. Hey, thank you, Trisha, for inviting me for, for your interview. I'm so happy to be with you here today. And uh, my name is Mohammed, and nickname is Simo. And oh, I'm from, I am originally from Morocco. Yes. And I've been in the United States for four years now. Yes. And I am new in the fashion industry too. So thank you for inviting me again. And I'm happy to talk to you today and tell you all about my story. And um, we love your French accent, by the way. That oh, thank you, incredible. thank you. Yes, and yeah, uh, yeah and I, I'm, actually I speak from French, and I speak a little bit, a little bit Spanish. I took Spanish in high school too for three years. Oh, so you took yeah. Spanish in high school too? Yeah, I, I I took one year of French myself and three years of Spanish. So I, I okay, I'm a yeah, bit more that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, so you still remember some words, French words? Yes, I, I know yeah. a little bit of French, but mostly yeah, a little bit more Spanish. So oh, okay. Um, well, that's incredible. So um, so you you used to live in North Africa and um, yes, actually what, Morocco and Northwest Africa. So we are close to Portuguese, Portugal, and uh, Spain. If oh. have, yeah, so we are actually in North Africa and closer to Europe from in both sides. So actually between Morocco and Portugal and Spain, it's just like a small. So what brought, you, what brought you to the United States? And actually, it is a long story that uh, actually I was in a college. That's my, my, second, my first year in college. I finished high school and I graduated high school in 2013. And I went to college. I was studying economic. So I was actually, st I started studying French since I was five years old until my last year, my first year in college. So I was, my dream was going to Europe, to France, to help my family over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, my yeah, all my family, they are in France. And then we have in uh, Africa is something called the lottery visa, the American dream. So, yeah, it's like, basically it's like, lottery like you put i put my i my and my id and and my high school diploma informations and stuff and i have i had to wait a whole year to actually wait for the pulling the number so in the, the end of uh, i applied for the lottery visa they gave us like a case number so and we had to wait until they pulled the numbers and who was lucky who won the, the visa and actually it is a visa for three months and then we get like a, a kind of like a citizenship is a resident residentship in, in, in the United States is like a green card. So for people that they have a high school diploma actually is a big chance and is really, really a good thing if you want, if anyone want to be in the United States, in, in the United States as a legal immigrant to go ahead and apply for the lottery visa, the United States lottery visa is actually, it is almost in all over, the, all over the world can go and apply for the lottery visa. Anyone have a high school diploma. They can wow. do that. Yeah. And actually that's United States like allow anyone that have uh, education and uh, from any other countries to come to United States by the lottery visa or citizenship. So did you do, I, I see that you really have a passion for modeling and um, oh, yeah. so did you do the modeling over there in Morocco? And Yeah, actually in Morocco, actually we don't have a lot of model opportunities. So I start as a, like a, a model for, uh, doing just a small model shows for like a culture, like a runway show, like a cool small design, designing like for my country, for like designers for like uh, men clothes. And I had, I did just two runway shows back in Morocco, mm -hmm. but I loved it. And then when it, uh, what, it was one of my dreams to, to go to Europe to, 
took it to a different level, a higher level in France. But actually, when I won the lottery visa, everything changed. Actually, my ideas and like my plans and everything. So I had to come to United States. And that was actually, I was scared. It was a little bit scary. I was 19 by then. And I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't speak English. I didn't, I didn't know where I'm going. I didn't have no one in here in, in the United States. And they just like, first I knew that I, I, I got the, I got the visa. I was like, so scared. I was like going back and forth. Do I have to go? Do I need to go? Or should I just stay home and finish my college and go to France and then I can do whatever I want I actually my my French like my French is really good so I can actually it would be much easier I was thinking by then it, it was much easier to go to France but I don't know it just I think I got tired from studying college and it was economic and it was so hard it was a lot of math it was it was really hard so and then I was like, you know what? I'll give it a chance. I, I'll give it, i give it a try. I will go for like a couple months or three months. And if I do like it, I will stay and do modeling. And actually it is a lot of opportunities for modeling in the United States. And it is really nice. And actually I don't regret my decision. I'll, it was a right decision to come to the United States. Well, sometimes you just gotta take a step of faith, you know. Yeah, actually, yes, that's right. Like, like sometimes we have a lot of plans. We have a really, uh, we we be thinking that we we already have everything under control, but actually it is not. Actually, one one thing it can change everything, and God have a plans for us. How we absolutely, yeah. yes, absolutely. Sometimes we just gotta, you know, just take one step. We, even though we don't see the whole staircase in front of us, we just keep, you know, we just take. Yes, it just <laughs> everything get easier. Actually, yeah. like yeah, how is it? I, when I came to United States, I didn't have anyone, and uh, actually it was hard to communicate at first. Almost for three months, I, it was really hard to communicate with people and stuff, but. After that, I start. I got my. I got a job, and I start communicating with people, and start learning, catching a little bit by little bit, and having uh, having like conversations with the friends, and that's how I learned really really fast. That's helped me a lot in learning English. So, so after that, on. yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and after that, I start looking for uh, modeling opportunities. So I start from there and my first show, I, I, I found in like one day I would just sit, a lot of people, they were sit, they meet me outside. They were like, oh, you should model. I was like, oh yeah, I, I know. It's just hard to find time to model and find like time for myself to do anything actually, except working and bill, paying bills and stuff. You know how, how it was hard because I didn't have someone I didn't have my family by then over here that I can just like do whatever I want without without like caring about paying bills and making money and stuff like that. So that was hard at first, but after that I, I start like just try after in weekends when I have weekends off, I, will, I was like sitting home Googling about uh, uh, fashion weeks and my first fashion week, it was in New York by then. It was New York Fashion Week. And I put my application. And after three months, I heard back from them. So I was so happy. And I had to go for the, I had to go to the casting the first day. It was, it was Sunday. And actually I was working that day because I was working some, one week I'd be off and the other week I had to work. And the casting, it was the weekend that I had to work. So it was so hard for me. And they used to work night shift and it is six hours drive from here to New York. So I was the really that week, I spent the whole week trying to find someone to cover me for, for that day. So, and then it worked out actually Saturday night, one of my friends, he was like, oh yeah, absolutely. I can cover you tomorrow, but you can work for me Monday. I was like, yeah, sure. I can do that. And from there, I went to I went to the casting, and there were a lot of people. The line was so long, almost like six blocks away from, and it was raining and it was cold. 
So actually, I made it that day, and the uh, the producer he was there were like a lot of designers, and like we walked for the designers, and the, it was the the decision is the designer decisions. So if you got picked by any de designer, and then you would come back for the show. If you didn't get picked by any designer, and then you have to leave that day. And I got picked by five designers, and it was really nice, and I was so happy. I was, I was like, it was a dream for me. <laughs> it was my first runway show, and I was really excited to come back for that show. And actually, I would pay anything to go back by time to live that experience again. And I'm, I'm so happy that's what I'm run like modeling what I'm doing and actually I would love to stay be modeling all the time and take it to another level and be uh, up to and do modeling full time. That is awesome. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Let me just see. I'm hoping my echoing on that side. Does that sound better? Okay. <laughs> um, let me see here. You said that you were with New York City Fashion Week, DC yep. Fashion Week, Richmond, Virginia Fashion Week. Yep. Uh, so did you go to, have you been to the, how many years have you been going to those up to the fashion weeks in New York city? And actually I've done three shows in New York, but they are different shows. It was one, the one, the first one, it was New York fashion week. And another one, it was please, uh, fashion week. And then there, when I got training, the first one, it was the place fashion week. It was a competition. It was a competition between models. It was in 2018, I believe, if I can remember. That what, was- what, what, what? Who did you walk for when you went up to New York Fashion Week? Uh, I walked for uh, three designers, uh, men's suits designers, and one, swim, and one, one swimsuit designer. Well, that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah I, I, I really enjoy it. I usually, I have been going up to New York Fashion Week for the last uh, three years and uh, I'm, um, I walk with High Tech Moda and I really have enjoyed it. It's just really incredible during that, that season, yeah, especially in the fall and September. That's just, yeah, it's, it's really fun. Really I, fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really, it's really fun. I loved it, especially actually when I was in, I was, I was, I was happy, excited. And in the, in, in, in the same time, I was like, so stressed, so scared, and it was my first show. And when I walked for my first design, I was walking and I was really scared. And when I just come out, there were a lot of people. I come out and I was really stressed. And then I heard people like shouting when they saw my first outfit. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that's what I wanted. That's Did you what go I this wanted. Oh, no, I did not actually, I did not. Actually, my, my is my microphone sounding different when I'm talking to you? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, if it's an echo. Actually, I hear you just good. Um, okay. <laughs> I was just making sure when I talked to you, it was an echo on there. Um, did you go up this February for New York Fashion Week? Or? No, actually, I didn't. Actually, I just switched jobs. So it was hard for me. I'm trying to keep up. I was like moving to a new place, moving. I got a new job. So it was really hard hard for me yeah and I'm also going to school this semester so it's really hard it was hard yeah, for it was me. really cold up this year, year. <laughs> oh yeah I heard I had one of my friends that she went this year and yeah it was it looked it looked really cold over, the, over there yeah so, and it also really with COVID is 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 a little bit hard to travel especially now in with every any jobs that require if you are going outside the state especially if you are going to like a hot zone or hot spots you need to be quarantined for 14 days so how do you think that's going to change the modeling field for you now that with the, with covid in the in the picture of it do you think that's going to change your perspective actually, on modeling or actually it changed a lot actually it slowed down and actually the 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 first two years for me it was really busy after the new york fashion show actually i got a lot of runway shows almost every month i get two runway shows three runway shows but now uh, i do more photo shoot because it's more safe 
and uh, more like under control. I don't be with a lot of models in back in 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 the backstage. We don't mm -hmm. be a lot of models. We be just just me actually and photographer and that's and most of the time we'll be wearing masks but like to go to a big run with big show this like now especially in this situation is really hard and actually is not a lot going on especially something that's close to me that I can drive like two or three hours so it's it's it been slow it's it been really slow what did you mean when you said whoa what did you mean when you said you're a fashionable model and unconventionable vibe? What did you mean by that? Actually, most of the producer I worked with that anything, most every time, like especially the design, actually the designers, every time anything that's any clothes or anything that's they give me actually just fit. It just looks good. And most of them, they were like, I don't, I don't find the hard time at all to dress you up. <laughs> a lot of times, like a model, it doesn't show up and they'd be like, you know what? I don't have another model. Can you walk first? Be That's a bonus. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> thank real. you. And they'd be like, can you just walk first and come back really fast and just wear this outfit? And I do. And he'd be like, but just a fashionable. Like, I don't, I, a lot of the designers, they don't have a, a hard time with me, like, they need to take the measurement again and again. Most of the time they have something is already ready is not. Oh, that's makes you a lot more marketable. That makes you more marketable right there. I'll tell you that. Cause they all, cause you know, a lot of times they all have something and they want it ready. And even if people put their measurements, a lot of times it's not the same thing when they get there. So they need somebody that's gonna fit right now. They need it on there and ready and get on the stage. They need yeah, it. That's, that's true. Like I've been, <laughs> I, I've been in the news for a, a fashion a brand that's been actually, they don't take our our we do we don't do fitting for 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 the brand. I've been uh, I, I I did I work for a, a Gucci is is in new uh, new uh, DC. Uh, it was W U uh, U U uh, S A nine. And oh yes, I saw that on your bike. Yeah, and uh, good morning, DC. I did commercials with them, and actually, we didn't do fitting. It just in the morning, seven. It was at seven in the morning, and they just we just drove to there, and they fit us with what they got. And most of the time, models, a lot of models, even when they get there, actually not fit, so they end up not doing the commercials so mm. yeah it is, it is, yeah, yeah a lot a lot actually like a lot of times designers pick models and when they go for the show they don't find anything they need models that they already have like the designer already made his outfit and when uh, he pick a lot of models and he cannot find someone that exactly fit in that outfit so i feel like really bad but also that you have to know a lot of a lot of times that is gonna happen to you at first until you found like the, right. the body type that's it gonna go with anyone so right i, I saw a quote you said let me make sure my speaker's coming on right it's not coming out right um success is not final and failure is not fatal i like that i actually wrote it down in my journal by the way when i saw your on your bio i was like you know what oh. I'm writing that in one of my little quote things. I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, that's actually, a good quote. So actually, you have to know when every time I be talking about, like, be talking about life. I grew up in a middle class family, so working hard is everything, and don't give up. Like, I start working hard since I was. I I, I start remembering. Like, I was going, go go to school during go to school do go to school and in the weekends i would go go work i go like hang out and like found something to sell i was working i, I worked hard like i know a lot of people they will see like oh he's just a model he, he 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 grew up first day he born he was a model no i worked hard actually actually i i did a lot of stuff i sold a lot of stuff i like i buy i buy like stuff and sell them again i think my first time i i bought i bought peach and i sold it in college 
like you bought what? Uh, peach. Like I I go like I go to the store buy peach. You know peach? Peaches? Yeah. Oh, peaches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bought those and I bought like by pounds. I bought like two pounds or something like that. And I went to college to buy them, to sell them one by one, like separately. Hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I mean, yes. you got to get yeah, to I... B, so you do what you got to do. And hey, did it help? Yeah. They, yeah. Okay. And okay. after that, actually, that's how I actually that in, in, like, it did good in, in my life that, that benefit me. Uh, so I, I learned how to work hard and doesn't matter what happened. I never, I learned, I never gave up on my dreams. And every time you have to know, yeah, you will, you will not make it to, you will, sometimes you are not going to make it where you want, but it, it doesn't mean that that's it. No, it is something better coming. God has something better for you. Oh, yes. I was saying about, I was planning to go to, to France to finish my college and to finish my college, go to France mm -hmm. and have my family uh, in, in, in France and stuff. But God want me to come to United States. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he have a different pl plan for me. And they just went with the flow. I just follow my sense. I just did it. Well, Simo, if anybody wants to get a hold of you or reach out to you or book you for any new shows, how can they get a hold of you? Can you can they can we give them your information on here? Can you tell them? Are you on Facebook, Instagram, or or can you give yes. them your information? Yes, actually, I have my model, my model, my Instagram page. My model Instagram page is Simo, L E A L Y E, and my Facebook page is Mohammed, is I, is Simo is Mohammed is I. Okay, well, if you are interested in booking Simo for any upcoming fashion shows, runway, model, New York Fashion Week, or anything like that, yep. get a hold of him and reach out to him. And we have enjoyed having you on Worthy today. Thank you so much again. And uh, you have an incredible story. And of um, it, like I said, this quote, I put it in my journal. Success is yes. not final. Can have it. Failure is not fatal. So Never. <laughs> awesome. And I, I appreciate your time today and, and just telling us about your journey from all the way from Morocco to the United States. We've got yep. a high fashion model here and the sky's the limit for you. And we hope the best for you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on Worthy today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right.